get a lot of questions about side imaging. I'm going to tell you a few things that I think will really help you uh, understand what you're seeing. You're right here, we're at Kentucky Lake, and I'm at the Paris Landing Bridge. First and foremost, you can't try to look at too big an area. If you look right here, um, you can see the riprap bridge on my side, and you can start to see there's a couple of rock piles coming in. There's a little chunk of rock right here off the corner. And on the down imaging, there's a big school of fit bait right underneath me. What I try to do to learn a lot about this technology is graph stuff like this that you can see. I can see what size those rocks are, so it gives me an idea in relation to what I'm looking at right here. There's a big bridge piling coming here on my left right now, and if you look here on the screen, when you, when you hit that, you see in relation the size of that bridge piling is compared to the screen. And usually what I found is it's a lot smaller. I mean, that thing's 15, 20 feet long, and it's showing up as three or four inches. So if you see a big object on your side imaging or your down imaging, it is giant underwater. Another thing that's really important is you can set these units up to look 150 feet left and right. If you try to look at too big an area, you lose a lot of your detail. Look at that huge school of fish right there. Huge school of fish right here. All those white marks, no telling what they are, but that's just a, a bunch of, of fish right there on that corner of that bridge right there. So it's one of those things that after using the unit for a little while and experimenting with it, you can see how things show up. Down imaging is especially something that I use an awful lot now because it's like sonar, but it just gives it a, a much more detailed picture. You know, you can actually, if you go over a brush pile or a tree with the down imaging, you can actually see the fish in the limbs of the tree, where with the sonar, it just, it just kind of blocks it all the way out. There's, there's no substitute for still having the sonar on, and that's why I usually run a side imaging, right, left, down imaging, and my sonar, because at high speed, you still can't get that picture. You know, with the, with the side imaging and down imaging, you really need to be going three to five mile an hour to get your best picture. If you go faster than that, it just doesn't work out. So, you know, if you get out there, graph some things that you know exactly what they are, that you can see them. Again, road beds, boat ramps, uh, piles, you know, or shallow stumps that you can, see, you know, that you can see. When you mark a stump on your side imaging and it looks like it's as big as a pencil eraser, that thing is six feet around. It's a giant stump. So once I learned um, what I was looking at on the screen in relation to real time size, I, 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 you know, was able to really determine a lot more subtle structure out there. You know, when you're looking for things like an old broken down brush pile or a shell bed. Side imaging is a great tool. It, it really helps you be a lot more efficient because right now, you know, I'm looking at 140 feet instead of looking at three or four feet, um, you know, with just sonar. So it, it does make you a lot more efficient. You just have to understand how to read it.